Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. We're going to be talking about how a major news source said that this thing can pull 6,000 pounds and that is totally not the case. Very dangerous. We're going to explain to you why and give you a channel update coming right up now. So Marie's become a total pro at backing up the trailer. Even when I throw out obstacles for her, such as the barbecue. But uh, important to keep in mind that the Bronco, even when it has the 2.7 liter, V6 does not pull like an F-150. You cannot pull 10,000 pounds with this. You can pull 3,500 pounds, and that's not because the motor and transmission can't take it. That's because, you know, it's a much more powerful than what you've got sitting in the Ford Ranger that pulls 7,000 pounds. But the reason really for this is suspension and brakes. There's a whole lot more to towing than just motor and transmission. Now let's see what Marie has to say about all this and how she finds backing up the Bronco is like. So Marie, how do you like backing up with the Bronco? It's easy, but I guess it's the trailer too that helps. It's easy to back up that one, so. But with the Bronco, I see clearly in the mirrors, I see in the back, I have the camera, so yeah, that's perfect. And the Bronco isn't too long, so backing up with it, even if though we've got a trailer here, Better than in the back of an F-150, yeah. <laughs> and being that our Badlands has a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 and can pull up to about 10,400 pounds in an F-150, naturally, how much would you think that this would pull? I totally don't know. <laughs> Do you think it'd pull at least as much as a Ford Ranger that has a four-cylinder? Maybe, yes. I'm not that good with the kind of motors, but um, we tried this in, um, how can we say that? It, it was a street that was going like that just before going home with the trailer and it was like it was nothing on the back. Yeah, and that's because the motor, the motor can have, you know, 415 pound feet of torque. It is a beast, 335 horsepower. The motor has no issues whatsoever, but what we need to keep in mind is what the brakes and what the suspension can handle. And this is an off-road suspension. So as much as people are gonna think that they can go, you know, pull a tree out of its roots, you can't go and pull, you know, 10,000 pounds with this. You gotta keep it under 3,500 pounds, but it has been a total blast. You've been loving your Bronco? Yeah, so much. If, it's perfect today with the weather, with the top down. So it's fun to do, uh, to go uh, shopping and came back with the top down. Yeah, you're gonna miss that with the Maverick, aren't you? So much. <laughs> so much. So we've got the Badlands. We wanted the signature LED lights. We wanted that steel bumper. Marie just loves these mags here. She likes them more than my Sasquatch mags. And well, we've got about 30 bags in here of mulch and dirt. And Marie really does know how to use the trailer. And on that bombshell of a teasing, let's actually talk a little more serious about another misconception that people have had, and that's that you have to take what? the spare tire oh, off in order to attach your trailer. And that's because of the little pin on the tops of these trailers. Well, and that's totally the not the case. What you need yeah. is actually a hitch, a ball, that drops down to the correct Heights. So really great backing up. You can do it so easily because you just line up those little black lines with your hitch and well, you'll end up right on it. Or about the real deal but behind towing because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. I've even come across several times that you know, a complaint about the Bronco is that you have to take the tire off to hook it up. That is completely not true. So let me run this through you. It's real simple. First of all, you need the proper fitting. So this is a six inch drop and this is a two inch drop. So once I've got my two inch drop with my ball, things don't really hook up. When they do hook up, the trailer here is at an angle. So when I've got my four wheeler, in the trailer, the weight distribution is all wrong because really the trailer is constantly wanting to pull off of the ball. So this is a lot of ball talk, I know, but this is important ball talk that you need to know because you really need to take care of how you put weight on this ball. You don't want your trailer aiming down
down on it, which would mean too much of a drop and you don't want it going up because then it constantly wants to pull off. And also the tire here, it does block when you don't have enough of a drop. So I'll show you that right here. So I can go in with this closed, but you can't put it down with it closed. So I had worked out a way of kind of wiggling things around and I have hooked it up this way before, but it's really far from ideal. And I can kind of understand people's first reaction being, well, I need to remove the tire. But before posting something on the internet and convincing of other people of your unverified, what kind of turns out to be, you know, a bit of very understandable nonsense, but still nonsense, not just the same because it's work to take this thing off. It weighs a ton. You can hurt your back. All you simply need is a good six inch drop. Now, less of an issue on the Badlands. So this is the Sasquatch Bronco. And on the Badlands, well, the Badlands tire is smaller. So it just barely fits with the locking mechanism up. You can see here the trailer is on an angle if you want to show that, Matty. So that's what I was talking about, the trailer being at an angle, the weight distribution being all wrong. So for the Sasquatch package, I could have gone with a four inch drop, but in this case, I've actually gone with a six inch because how I see that, once I've got the six inch and the ball here, it's gonna be just the right height to keep my trailer level. So that's what you wanna do for proper towing. Now more about towing, it's really important to mention that if you do get an aftermarket hitch, because right now Ford themselves are saying that asking for the hitch from Ford will slow down your Bronco order. It's constrained. So the issue, if you put an aftermarket hitch on, is you're not gonna have the seven pin. That's this one right here. So your seven pin, you've got your four pin, that's easy to see and count. It's just, you know, four pins. The seven pin is, is that circular pin connection. You need that seven pin that you see right here. Now that's required in order to have control of the brakes on your trailer. So if you're not, really simply put, if you're not gonna have a trailer that has brakes on it because it weighs, you know, this trailer weighs five, 600 pounds. It doesn't need brakes. But if you're gonna have a 2000 pound trailer, it's gonna have brakes on it. And you're gonna wanna have the seven pin and you're gonna, pro you're gonna wanna wait for either a solution from the aftermarket to give you not just the four pin as it currently does, but also the seven pin, or you're gonna wanna wait out your Bronco and get your Bronco just right with that seven pin connector. So that's the main thing behind waiting for the original Ford hitch. Some people have said that it looks better than the aftermarket for me. So it's, that's not so important. It's about security. And if I was pulling regularly, let's say 3,500 pounds, then I might would have a trailer with brakes on it. And I would definitely require having that seven pin trailer hitch. Now, another misconception about the Bronco is that if you've seen it on the internet, it's going to happen to your Bronco. And that's just not the case. Matty has a Bronco. I have a Bronco. And we will get to the channel update where we talk about the new cars coming to the channel. But before we get to there, one last misconception. It is important to keep in mind that just because someone is having, let's say, the water come in from the pillar with the airbag doesn't mean it's going to happen to yours. We have two and we haven't had it occur on either one and there's also the whole blown engine talk now all the engines that it's happened to it's it's around it's a little over 46 now and it's happening because a valve is dropping into the engine because of a bad valve batch and it's always thus far has occurred every single time below 10,000 miles often around one to three thousand miles so if your Bronco has more than 10,000 miles you're almost certainly in the clear it also there is talk that this is something that occurred uh, in year one production so 2021 uh, for those produced um, really it's a, ba ba a bad batch of valves that came in in April and they were installed throughout May June July August September and I think also October. Well, this was built in late August and no issues whatsoever. So just because there's talk about on the internet that it's happened to someone, it is easy to assume, oh my, you know, the emotional response, oh my goodness, that's gonna happen to me. They're all bad, they're really not all bad. And it is important to keep in mind that all manufacturers 
will have issues on every single one of their models and more than one issue. It's just the more hyped up and the more excitement there is around a model, well, the more you're gonna hear about it. Now, if you have a bad valve in in installed in your engine, there's nothing to do other than wait. And when it does blow, you'll get a new engine from Ford. And that is fantastic because some manufacturers will try to blame the client and how they drive, where they drive and whatnot. One of the most famous cases goes back to Porsche uh, when they came out with the 1999 911 Porsche. Uh, pretty much everyone who had an engine issue, and there's quite a few of them, were just being told, it's your fault, it's based on how you drive. So it's great, Ford has publicly said that the, they will replace the motor, that it's warrantied. So I want you to keep that all in mind. Now, of course, just regular important maintenance on your Bronco. I do recommend absolutely always go with the, the uh, oil filter that Ford recommends. And ideally, go with synthetic. You don't have to, but go with a good synthetic oil. But the big one is the good oil filter. Otherwise, if you buy a cheap oil filter, well, turbo one and two are going to become oil filter two and three because the first one just isn't doing the job properly so no cheap oil filters but now to show you a problem on this one this bronco has been great to us it has given us no problems other than once kind of drifting in the snow it made a loud ping noise coming from the front wheel and nothing seemed to end up breaking from it the tie rods are still attached um, but the top here and we remember this is Marie's Bronco, and it's not an issue on my Bronco. At least it's an extremely hot day, and we'll make sure it's not. But you can see it over here, actually, Marie, if you want to come over on this side, you can see that gooey stuff coming off. For some reason, and maybe this has to do with the fact that our top doesn't leak, but this is an Edition 1, what I like to call Edition 1 soft tops. Our second Bronco doesn't have nearly as much wave in the plastic windows, but there's this black gunk that keeps spider webbing off and I don't I don't know if that's extra sealant either way it's really not much of an issue unless you get it in your hair as Marie did so she came home compl complaining and I said honey I'll check it out I'm sure it's not much of an issue and it's really not our top hasn't leaked our top's been great to us our top in the winter never got snow coming in on the side and I know a lot of people a lot of us we were kind of got worked up and worried when we saw that one or two videos come out coming out with snow coming on the sides mind you we do always make sure if you want to show the top bracket right here Marie we do always make sure this middle section is clamped in really well when we put the top back together and even when your Bronco is brand new I do suggest you check this because from factory they might have put this on so that it didn't clamp in um, and of course, if you're going to have extreme winds, it's always good to not park where your vehicle is going to be getting hit by extreme winds right on the side. So I used to live in a house that was a farmhouse and, it, you know, if I parked a certain way, I knew in one winter a bit of an older car would rust right up because the wind was just pounding on that side of the vehicle. So this, with the soft top, ideally don't park it where it's just going to get pounded by a side wind. Now let's head, check out the other Bronco. Okay, so here's my Bronco, and the top has had no issues. It, it's got a lot less wave in the back, so I like to call these Edition 2. It was made in December of 2021. And my trick for opening the top is I like to stand on my sidebar, which has been great for... Standing on the sidebar has been absolutely great for preventing door dings, and it's also great for opening and closing the roof. So these side rails are just wonderful. I'm also really happy that I got this window tinted in the front because it has been just fantastic at cutting out the heat coming into the vehicle. So it's not nearly as hot as it possibly could be. So love the tint. Factory tint back here does an amazing job. So really pleased with the factory tint. And the top also has had no issues. Once again, we do make sure that this section right here is really snug and clipped in. So easy close, easy open and close, and I've just loved the soft top. We have not found no difference in the winter between the soft top and the hard top. Now let's go to a bit of the channel's projects. Channel update time. We said goodbye to a lot of cars in the last two weeks. Uh, we sold the 94 Mustang GT convertible. Uh, we sold the 2007 Escape. And now we've got 
what is very much a project car and you know on the Bronco we we're just talking about the interior not being hot with those tinted windows well I'll show you here so far the most surprising thing about this old 93 MR2 real nice it's got a 97 turbo engine in it the 3s GTE but it comes with with a real what I would call uh, a, a manly test that that shifter knob is burning hot <laughs> so just before I move the vehicle out of the way and that is an absolute burning shifter knob so you'll hear more about the MR2 uh, because this used to be my MR2 I had it from 2007 to 2013 and now I've bought it back so you hear more about it on the channel so on the channel we are going to redo that MR2 from A to Z but do we get a 2022 Mustang GT like we've had in the past or do we go with another off-road vehicle well Winston's probably the best car reviewer on this channel so you hear his opinion in just a moment that's just joking around we will do actual reviews on the Rubicon and the Mustang hey Winston you excited to see a Mustang in the yard Should we buy this, Winston? Winston, you want a Winston? You want a Mustang ride? So you don't have to vote just like Winston, but he does know his vehicles. You'll see at the end, he definitely wanted to get out of that Jeep. It doesn't ride or handle anything like the Bronco. So I'll be covering that coming up soon. So you'll just want to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, you like the Mustang, Winston? You wanna come check it out, Winston? Yeah, you wanna do a little uh, Mustang review, a little car review of this one? Yeah? Should we buy it, not just review it? I think we don't have a choice now. He loves it too much. <laughs> I think you should let him in the car. He's pretty excited. Back to you going, Winston. You like it? You ready to get out already? Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, just comment finisher and please comment what vehicle you'd like to see on the channel as the next long term review. Because, well, we've got to make room. We just made room in the yard. So we've made space. We're ready to go. We're ready to rock and roll. In the meantime, we all wish you more cars and more power. Hope your Maverick or Bronco gets in soon and hope you get to put it, the pedal to the metal real soon. Have a great week.